Hello and welcome to another episode of Zof Talks Photography. Today we have a special one. What are some bad photography habits? So I've got a massive list here of bad photography habits. So if you are doing any of these, then you're in for a shocker. You want to stop doing it, basically. Tonsy, what do you think? Mm. Yeah, mm. Mm. explains it exactly how we want it explained. So let's check out what bad habits actually mean in photography so people will say different things they have rules the rules are there to be broken you can yeah. adapt them blah de blah de blah but thinking of the rule of thirds is the only possible way to frame anything mm. rule of thirds framing photography so kind of like always have it on the yeah axes so that's our first comment which got 112 points so 112 oh. people thought that was well, helpful. This okay. is something I asked on the Reddit community. So, all you know, right. I'm on the Reddit. Yeah. I'm, are all of the big boys on mm. Reddit. Yeah. Uh, so, Ask Photography and Photography have a group. And I basically pose a question to them and then I wait for them to give me some insight. Mm. So, these are proper photographers oh, and okay. people that are like amateurs and they're kind of into the thing. So, it's not just a random people. Yeah. So, someone said, I'm so guilty of this being, making it my goal to try different compositions though with event photography work so it's very useful for getting quick reliable shots that was his reply to that rule of thirds one okay so there's a few comments here various things so how about not taking care about the surrounding nature or actually destroying it like it happens a lot in iceland where example uh, i understand not getting the shot sucks but let's respect basic rules yeah so like in iceland they have special mm. bits that you can't step on so everybody oh, kind okay. of gathers around to take photos and they kind of destroy nature so like special ice ice oh, right. volcanic you know them little mm. things that you have i've not been to tectonic plates Tecto no come on tectonic plates no sorry uh like, no, one minute. Tectonic, that's like earthquakes and stuff where yeah. they kind of grind and they go... Yeah, when you make get volcanoes, yeah. But yeah, I think, I'm sure Iceland is More somehow... Icy, yeah. You know what, should I have a quick investigation into that? Uh, you can have a quick investigation into that, can't you? you got your uh, device there, mate, your Huawei, Huawei that we did a separate episode on. So I can't agree enough with this. Zero respect is how natural areas get closed off to everyone. Um, so yes, interesting. Um, and you know what? There's some people here saying so much this. Just can't understand people who are willing to step over fences or trample over whatever at the risk to nature, habitat and themselves just to get the same Instagram shot as all the other idiots are getting. Yeah, they just, I don't know, they just call it Iceland because famous Vikings like travel to there and... But if you put best Iceland photography spots, I'm sure there's like a good place there because a lot of people travel there to get like certain shots. Is that the one where at night the lights go? Is it Iceland or is it a different place? You know, when you get them... The, the name... The, I, I the forgot name the name. What's it called? The uh, green light or something. Yeah, it's like when you take a time lapse and you can see the lights going past. It's like the night show or something. Oh, I can't believe I don't know this. It's in my head, tip of my tongue, but it's not coming to me. Okay, um, another bad habit, shooting randomly and fixing it in post. Oh my God, this is a big one. So you shoot random shots and think, you know what, don't worry about it, I'll edit it and Photoshop it and fix it. And then they end up spending loads of hours trying to fix the photo that they took. Yeah. That is a very bad habit. Mm. Luckily, you don't have it. Yeah. Because you you've been really good. Because you take your mobile phone photographies, you used to randomly take shots and you kinda of looked at which were good. Mm. That's fine. But when you got the DSLR, you started locking in on it. You were like, you know, I'm gonna take two or three photos, take my time, make sure it's composed well so I don't yeah. have to spend three mm. hours. Because a lot of our thumbnails you take. Yeah. And then when we go into post, all I have to do is adjust the brightness a bit or yeah. you know, exposure. Contrast. Yes, and just reposition it, but nothing else apart from that. We don't have to like get rid of things in the shot. Yeah. So you kinda of compose it and, and reducing things in the photo um okay another one here similarly trying to pick with what trying to pick which of the 300 photos of the capture was a good one god i hate doing that lot i think that says campfire hmm? you said yeah. capture i said campfire i think yes but photo of the campfire was the good one. Oh, okay so you took loads of photos this is yeah. when you have like 300 shutter frames yeah. a second yeah. Like yeah. footballers do when they're doing sports yeah. uh, one of them is bound to be good spray and pray is what it's yeah. called bruv what's it called spray, spray and, and pray. pray um okay it's the worst because some of them are objectively better but you just got to get them go 
just let them go when there's that so many yeah because you've got too many of it so you kind yeah. of spend oh look at that one there my foot's a bit forward a bit yeah. back a bit left oh should that yeah. one better than that and uh, man i often feel like i'm the person i'm this person he's saying to reply to that spray and pray shoot and there are some photographers mostly taking pictures of school events for kids lots of the shots are brief spontaneous moments sports yes. or maybe a side interaction i try to set up my angles be aware of backgrounds etc but so often i feel like my shooting is just as you've said i have to clean up a few things in post to tell the story of that tiny window in time then again when when you see like celebrities coming or you hear yes so i don't get the point is because i get it they're taking pictures why don't you just take your time take three four pictures yes and if you get a decent picture just take it because exactly. you're taking 300 pictures for no reason and then you'll have to edit delete and uh, like do all of that yeah so what ends up happening is it's interesting because the person's standing there yeah they're just firing like, our shots yeah so that person hasn't moved so you've got 20,000 shots yeah is it just that they're gonna blink or something yeah it's paparazzi yeah. isn't it so i don't know if paps are actually qualified photographers they just go out with the camera and take shots yeah that's maybe true. i'm wrong but make sure mm. to correct me if i'm wrong yeah. i'm sure some of them are qualified but from yeah. the looks of it mm. it's just magazine shots and they're mm. making money from sending one photo that someone walking out of a yeah, shot after 100 pictures yeah yes um okay it's fine for event photography you control pretty much nothing so you will have a ton of duds to sort through and even your good pictures might need a lot of reframing in post because you can't actually move in the right spot that's not right no. come on we i've done fashion catwalks in a pit where you've yeah. got photographer shoulder to shoulder yeah i've not sprayed and prayed and i've got some decent shots that i've mm. got into magazines and yeah. all sorts so ideally if you've got a camera that you're taking portrait shots on and you've got a battery group on it you're always going to get it portrait yeah okay admittedly if they're coming down the walkway and the catwalk and you're taking photos you want to get a mixture of shots you want to get obviously with the yeah. feet slightly apart and the, if they do a twist at the end or anything but mm, interesting who is this nine points 360 post comma interesting okay fast moving events are entirely different animal i went to a shoot a local rally cross event last year and shot 1288 frames i used about 175 in the end some just didn't work out some i didn't pan fast enough okay yeah okay you control so little in these situations however for mi bandits we did that motorcycle shoot mm. we panned with the motorcycles going past and we wanted mm. to get the background blurry and them shop yeah out of 50 shots i got 20 usable shots mm. so 50 to 20 versus what 1200 or 275 is about what 10 percent roughly we just over under is getting mm, interesting some of them shots you if you've done it enough you get a bit of finger for it like the timing yeah you kind of move along with them mm. so that's interesting so thinking bokeh is everything this is a bad photography habit if you've just joined us they wouldn't have just joined us because yeah. they're watching from the starting yeah well, i like to say that like you know you have tv channels <clears throat> if you're just joining us we're talking about bad photography yeah. habits yeah. and today the first one or the one we've got to is thinking bokeh is everything you know what a bokeh is brav no i never heard bokeh. of it let me just say it properly bokeh bokeh is you know when you take that photo and the background's blurred yeah that blurry is called bokeh basically Oh. I don't know how you properly pronounce it though. It's basically on phones you have a portrait and when you take a picture you the picture you take basically if you take a picture of one item that item is like clear and everything around yes. it is blur. Exactly the background like the picture of the dog uh, of Max that we took before. Yes. That's it. So it's basically the bokeh yeah. bokeh bokeh. It's called Lodz- blurry I don't understand. I know lots of people use fancy words but yeah. it's uh, digital rev have you seen digital rev on no nah. it's basically a youtube channel that they okay. that's their keyword Bo- oh. bokalicious is a good channel they've i think they've split apart now oh, it's like okay. top gear oh right, it's right. basically top gear of photography yeah it's a really good channel and um, so okay thinking boca is everything so yes when you start off you'll get a low aperture lens you don't like a 50 millimeter 1.4 yeah we can make and we don't take our thumbnails with that because mm-hmm. i'm sharp and everything else is blurry so it's yeah. good for that scenario but generally speaking sometimes you, for a product shoot you want everything to be sharp yeah so bokeh isn't everything mm-hmm. um and we have a comment here something about tony northrup heard that i can't see him coming after us he's too blurry <laughs> <laughs> he's uh, another youtuber he makes like youtube videos oh, i think right. Um, yes okay so i tried to locate a post that jumped into my mind right away but i couldn't it was titled something like taken on 
top of a ferris wheel and then you had a ferris wheel so bulkered that it was unrecognizable wow. and the main focus of the photo was on the user's shoes and when questioned he said that he had just used the ferris wheel to get an interesting bulker wow. that's like you know when we took photos and we had like christmas lights in the background just to yeah. get them nice so it's like you use it in some scenarios for like mm. creative shots but you know what is that actually mm. the case? Uh, the sub ripped him to shreds. <laughs> this is, yeah, because what happens on Reddit is if you post something like dodgy yeah, or like a bit they'll silly, they'll you have loads it. of people, they're like humor, <clears throat> humorous people that would yeah. just come and just kind of do, drop Mess jokes. Yeah. Um, and yes, interesting poker was exactly the words he used and he seemed to believe that the poker was an absolute must for photo. Oh, he found... Should we look at it? Yeah. Let me see if I can show you. Well, I can't show you because it's a podcast, but let's see. Okay, there. It's that thing there. That's not bad. Yeah. What? I don't get that. Okay. So, so lighter, basically lighter he's, like teardrops, oh, okay. like raindrops. So he's sitting on a location. He's sitting somewhere. His feet are showing. It's like you know, when you're on the beach and you take a picture of your legs on the yeah. beach. It's basically that, but in the background is bulk and loads of lights. He is wearing Converse trainers. Okay. Taken from the top of a Ferris wheel, 1.4K wall tops. And That's probably not Christmas light. What I think is, you know, in the rain and then yeah. the thing moves because it yes. depends where he is. Christmas, uh, the f uh, Ferris usually move. Yes. And then the rain drops off. So that's probably what it is. It's rainy day. Okay. So, yes, if you were joining us on YouTube, you would have seen that photo. But if you're yeah. on the podcast, it's basically uh, that I just described what it was. Yeah. Okay. So the next one we have is... Okay, somebody commented, it's actually okay. not a bad photo though. Have the Ferris wheel in focus a little more lately. Yeah. Uh, but I think the bigger issue was him named the title about the Ferris wheel and the photos actually about his shoe. Yeah, Converse. Yeah. Basically like promoting If he had said, oh, I've got a new pair of Converse, yeah. that would have fitted because it's like interesting. Okay, so there are many more photos ruined by insignificant depth of field than for by poor quality bokeh. Bokeh is not a subject. Obsessing on a fast lens and shallow depth of field just means that you haven't figured out that there is more than one way to isolate or compose your subject yet. Yeah, so that's okay. If you're new to photography and you're using that to get yeah. better, that's fine. There's nothing mm. wrong with that. Taking group photos is a great way to teach yourself that sometimes more than one thing needs to be in focus. Excellent point. So if you're getting loads of bokeh shots, yeah. And you're used to taking it like that. And then you come with a scenario where you have to take a picture of five people. And you're like, wait a minute, why is everybody not, why is one person's nose out of focus and eyes in yeah. focus? Then that teaches you to say, actually, wait a minute, let me look at the depth of field and increase the shutter, not shutter speed, the f-stop. So if it's an f1.4, let's go up to f5. Mm. And you get the line of people in focus. So it's a good learning curve. Uh, another bad habit, I shoot a lot of macro and often find myself concentrating on the insect and focus so much I forget about the background and composition. Uh, okay. I always find some tack sharp shots with an awful looking background. Wow. Interesting. So for this early spring is the first time in my life that I've taken flower bloom photos while also remembering to look around and see if I need to pull a dead leaf or other dumb thing from the immediate vicinity. 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 Some of the things I've been guilty of in the past. So there's a big list of things here. Uh, Let yeah. me go to the main one. He got a nice one there, so he must have run it. He's got a look. Okay, so we have obsessing on gear. That that is a bad habit. Yeah, you don't need the best gear to get for no. amazing photos. You got bag and rock in your camera. If your camera can fit in there, yes, you're fine. And not caring about what came before. So used photo books are cheap. You can get two or three for the price of memory card, and there are those things called libraries. They will teach you more than any yeah. online photography tutorial, mm. Photoshop tutorial. Having too much gear. So, library, what do you, what does it mean by library? Like having photo, uh, photography books. So like kind of not looking at what photos other people took, so in history. So having oh. a look at photos, so go to the library and look at. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you've got books. Yes, I do have books. That is a good mention. So I have a number of guide to photography. We have by John Hedgeco. We have 
adventures in close-up photography. These are older books. There's a one yeah. that most people have, which is Tom Ang, Digital Photographer's Handbook. There's a loads more here. Yeah. We've got a shelf them. At some point, if someone's interested, just let us know. We can actually talk about these and see if you know they do reviews yeah. on books. It mm -hmm. might be interesting. And yeah, I've just dropped everything. Wow. That's just amazing, isn't it? That light's always been there. That's yeah. the one who made the Iron Man. Oh, that's a different channel, so we won't mention it here. Okay, so some things I've been guilty of. You've mentioned that books, dogs can be black. It's fine. Dogs. Yeah. So if some if you take a photograph and it's really some spots are dark, yeah. they try and keep detail in darks. But actually, you mm. can have it black. It's fine. Yeah. Don't worry. You can saturate some parts. It's fine too. So he's basically saying don't get too into it, as in mm. some people get too like hung up on the pixel details and why yeah. they, 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 those guys, you know, yeah. you know who you are, brav. Yeah. Okay, so, um, and what else? Well, uh, being scared of boosting the ISO. Yeah. That is one. Me, I habit. just rack, I just rack it up, but then again. Now that I know the settings, because sometimes we've changed the light settings, but now that I know that it's on 800 or 600, I'll just whack it on there. Yes. So if you need to get a photo, mm -hmm. everybody's like, get the lowest ISO possible. But sometimes if it's dark, go up to 6400. Yeah, it. yeah. We got the 5D Mark II. It's an old yeah. camera. It's a full frame. We've had photos at 6400 that have been usable. Yeah. It's not like you're going to print it and put it on a billboard. That's a totally different scenario. It depends what the photo is being used for. Yeah. But some noise is fine if sometimes it adds to the photo because mm. you've got like a photo that's yeah. interesting and it's noisy it's like it looks a bit like film style and um, that was a good one actually um because that's a truly bad habit modern dslrs can handle it better jump that iso up and uh, then use pop-up flash or direct sp yeah. speed light yeah. yes so you don't need a flashlight or whatever you call them on yes. top of your camera because that's going to make too much headache yes and and there's a few more responses to that and i Personally, people are, oh yeah, okay. So there's loads of nice argumentative responses, which oh, is interesting. Okay. And we'll pass by those and yeah. let's see what else we've got. Okay, another bad habit here. Thinking that taking a photograph of something is the only way to make the experience worthwhile. Don't get so caught up in capturing a perfect image of a yeah. moment that you forgot to enjoy mm. the moment. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Because a lot of photographers, yeah, they want to catch, they take their photo, the camera everywhere with them, and then they don't enjoy the moment. This is like concerts. You go to a concert, if someone's playing music, what do you see a bunch of people doing, holding their phones up, recording yeah, it, yeah. and looking at the live performance through their screen? Mm. Would you sit at home watching TV? Yeah, What's wrong with you? What is this? Extra. Is this, this is the new TikTok generation, isn't it? That's what yeah. it is. Um, uh, no personal digs intended. And what else have we got? Okay. Shooting with crooked horizons is a bad, crooked, crooked like bent. Like bent. Yeah. But well, then well, again, if some bent ones look nice, because mountain or whatever you call yes. them, background, they're crooked. But they're saying that it's a bad habit. So what is happening is actually in this shot, it always bugs me. The back pillar behind us is crooked. You know, my top, I, I had a shot oh, now because okay. I've zoomed in. Yeah. But the pillar is actually, I'm straight, but the pillar's a bit crooked because it's our yeah. studio loft slash yeah. roof. And it, is, it was designed to be a bit crooked because the houses are all a bit yeah. off center or whatever. Lovely. But yes, that is a good mention. Not taking your camera wherever you go. You never know the opportunities that might arise before you. Yeah. So that's a good comparison to the other one because what happens is people will take photos mm. and then. When you have your camera, you don't get them photos. Yeah. You don't have your camera. We went to town. Look how many amazing shots we missed. We were like, oh, if we had a camera. But then again, you've got your mobile phone in your pocket. Yeah, use just... that. Yeah, it's no, no excuse. Um, oh, oh, here we go. Okay. Let you like give you this thread of angry. Okay. So you know when that person said shooting with crooked horizons? Yeah. Someone else came to him and said, agreed, any crooked pictures. And he did a link to a crooked picture. Keep your vertical vertical. This is literally the only way to ever produce anything that is worth something. And then the response well, is, okay, okay, calm down, angry photographer. He didn't yeah. say a crooked picture is worthless. You're only arguing with yourself. <laughs> I love Reddit. Uh, I love it. Okay. okay. Next response. Come on. What's the value of online forums if you can't get a bit... Stupid, peed off. Yeah, peed off with stupid things. Thanks, a good point. And now you're starting to pee me off. Thank you. <laughs> That's the spirit. Anger is the best way to express <laughs> passion. Actually, the only way, always be angry. Always end your sentence with an exclamation mark. Double to emphasize, uppercase all things. Yeah. Boom. Shaq. Erroneous. Okay, another bad habit. Not taking your camera wherever you go. That's, yeah. 
So yes. There's no excuse for that because you've got your phone. Yes. You probably have a different camera. Yeah, because what people one of the bad habit I add to that is taking your DSLR everywhere, thinking you're gonna get that amazing shot all the time. Yeah. You've got a camera with you every single time. If you have a phone, you've got a camera with you. And another bad habit, taking pictures and immediately looking at them in the viewfinder. Wow. Guess who does this? What do you mean? <laughs> so taking the photo and quickly looking at it. Oh yeah, I want to know if it's a good picture or okay, not. Okay, so how about if you were in a scenario where you took a photo and you were too busy looking at the what you took and you missed the next shot? No, if I take the picture, I want to know something if Something to think clear. about there, Tones. It's something to think about. And I've missed so many pictures because I was looking at the series I just took and not paying attention to what yeah. was happening next. This person got 29 points, so he, a lot of people agree with him. This obviously applies specifically to scenarios where things are moving rapidly. So that's a good comment. Yeah. I don't work in such scenarios and I deliberately spend time studying my exposure afterwards. Do it when you get home in your light room. Why do it straight away at that situation? Yeah, okay. Now, I had to learn that one early shooting sports. Yeah, sports mm, is yeah. something you will think of. So... Oh, if you see something across and there's a train track in front of you. Yes. And it goes, and then you miss it. <clears throat> For photographing like it's 2007 and you're playing Call of Duty, click, click, click. Pause, oh. click, click, click. So like, you know, oh, okay, spray yeah, and pray. Yeah, yeah. Thinking you are the best thing to ever happen to photography that wow. may, may mortals should never, I should, wait, let me say this in a nice voice. Let me just uh, clear my throat there. <clears throat> okay. Thinking you are the best thing to ever happen to photography that mere mortals should never dream of offering up a suggestion, observation, or critique. Thinking that you suck so badly that your shutter finger should be ritually <laughs> removed and burned in sacrifice to all the botched, terrible photographs you have ever created. Wow. Believing that this, oh, I messed that up. Believing that just because someone does something in a different way or prefers a different style, that they are trash and mm. should quit forever. Camera, camera, camera. Camera go click. Camera go click is his username. Uh, what do you mean by the first point? <laughs> see, see that. That's what Reddit's all about. People will come in and then just, just, just di fantastic. dissect what you said. Okay, I agree that you should find a balance concerning your first point. What is his first point? What? First point. Okay, okay. So he's basically saying thinking you were the best thing to ever happen to photography. So he's replying, yeah, oh, okay. okay, you know what, these guys, yeah. just, none of them are real photographers, you know yeah. what? They're just they, on there just to they keep act, people off. They act massive. Yeah. And then they pretend like they know everything. I've had a few people to try, offer me help. Like if I mentioned about my audio, like yeah. setting this up, and the audio interface has got a podcastage um, uh, Reddit on there. Yeah. And some of the guys will say silly things that, like, oh, are you sure your microphone volume is up in the window setting? Come on, bruv. I'm not I new. Yeah, I know yeah. that. Sometimes you can't get good advice out of them. And some people yeah. are really good, but on the yeah. opposite side, there's others that just don't know what they're doing. Okay. Raise the center column on a tripod. Raising the center column on a tripod. That's a bad habit. But we, we do that because that camera's steady and no, still. No, the, the, what I do with the newer tripod, I just move it around. That's another, um, uh, what's the word? Bad again? habit. Bad habit. I, I whack at the newer tripod, the one that's, um, whack it I whack it And I just move it around everywhere But then again You get more experience Because you know what you're doing after Exactly You're right Because once If you've got gear Yeah Basically do everything You can do with that gear So you know In the situation If you need it You, you yeah. know how to do it So if you had to go out In a mountain You'd know yeah. how to set the tripod up Because one oh, Sorry One um, Leg can be high One yeah. leg can be low And you know just Professional photographers well, When yes. they put one leg On the tab table And another two On the fr uh, floor Oh mate That was for our Top down shot examples Yeah So okay You can see Reduction Stiffness And Using the zoom lens As a framing tool I what? don't I don't understand this Framing tool Did someone say that Because he's quoted Someone saying that Whose quote is that Okay it's all the way up here so he's quoting someone. Okay. Yeah. Mm, okay. Interesting. That is an interesting concept there, mate. So zoom bad prime good. Zoom bad prime good. This is a bad habit. So you think that zooming lenses are bad, but prime lenses are good. So in on YouTube, you have some people that 
just shoot with prime lenses. Yeah. You know, say prime, like a hundred millimeter macro, have a okay. one point four, yeah. uh, fifty millimeter. But then, in some scenarios, we find it easier to shoot with the twenty four to seventy because yeah. when you do the thumbnails, you can easily yeah. zoom in and out. Whereas the other ones, you have to move forward and back. Mm. So um, it's not really a bad habit. It's just how people have been brought up to take photos. That was a look at some bad habits. I've got a few more. We're coming on to twenty four minutes. This is a nice long episode, yeah. Compared to what we normally do, yeah. Four lenses good, two lenses bad. Four lens, four lens. Yeah. So if you have like four lenses, four oh. prime lenses. Well, then again, you can have two prime lenses and two zoom lenses. But what I don't understand is better to have a zoom lens because then you don't have to move your hand forward and back. Yes. So you're just going to be giving exactly. your own arms a. But because a prime lens has less focusing, it less. Zoom. Like zoom has a multiple yeah. uh, glass, doesn't it? Yeah. It's a bit heavier. So the, in theory, people think that the quality is reduced, mm. but it's those pixel, pixel, yeah, pixel yeah, again, yeah. isn't it? It's those Reddit, oh, yeah, Reddit, that's part, yeah, yeah. It's Reddit experts, bruv, that's mm. what it is. Okay, so what else have we got here? Have we got a few more? High speed shutter. Oh boy, how did 1003 photographs get on wow. this card? <laughs> they are all the same. I'm so guilty of this. Interesting. Deleting images aside from the blatantly out of focus ones. You know what? That should have been at the top of our list. You know what? I might make, you know what? What we'll do is, because this went on a bit, I might go through this mm. and make a top 10 bad habits of photographers because some of these are really good. Yeah. But because they're so low down, I've not covered them straight mm. away, so mm. people might not be listing this far in. Yeah. Okay, so deleting images aside from the blatantly out of focus ones. Yes. Because what happens is, if I didn't delete my photos I took originally, I would have had use for those photos right now. Yeah. Because a lot of the tutorials I did for photography, I could have used those examples and said, look, I took this photo, this is why it's bad. Yeah. But now because I deleted them, I can't yeah. use that. And mm. show teach people, um, if your images aren't good enough, you're not close enough. <laughs> that's a that's a famous saying. Yeah. Hey, wedding photographers, buy a buy a team. Okay, okay, that's somebody photographer. Okay, interesting. That was your look at bad habits for photographers. So yeah. give me two bad habits that I haven't mentioned there. Um, Come on, put you in the uh, spot. I know. Sometimes when you put a lens on. Yes. And you tried to take a picture and you forgot you took to take the front to cover off the lens. Oh, yes. That's a you... very good one. I'm surprised no one mentioned that. Mm. That oh. and one, uh, I don't even really know the next one. Sometimes when you're trying to zoom in, you yeah. accidentally use the focus and you focus like yes. basically that. Yeah. So yeah. depending on how well you know the lens. Okay, that was mm. a good look at that topic today. I'm hoping you find that helpful and you're still with us because this was a long episode. Yeah. And it's basically bad habits and Reddit really got behind us on this one and gave us loads of content Thank for this podcast. So I'm hoping you find this useful and I'll see you on the next episode. Doom, 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 doom.